this is our new hotel. I've just been editing the video of us getting on the boat or getting the car onto the boat. Marlene worked with the escort to bring it into the port, clear customs and all that stuff. That was about a week ago. Today is actually the day that the boat sets sail. So we got word back from our shipping agent that today they're loading, but they haven't heard any bad news about any cargo getting cut off that wasn't going to make the trip. So we were just kind of hoping that things would go well, hoping that our car makes it on. And then lo and behold, we get a Facebook friend request and also an Instagram follow. And it's from this guy named Big Dog. Oh, this is his Instagram account. And then he proceeds to send this photo of our van in the boat, lashed down. He's actually one of the longshoremen that works at the docks. And either he or one of his colleagues loaded the car onto the boat, lashed it down, saw the website name on the side of our car, went to our website, friended us, and sent us this photo. So I thought that was really cool, and I thought that it would be worthwhile <clears throat> adding this little video clip in front of this video that's coming up. So this video is all the details about the process of getting the car loaded and preparation and all that stuff that you have to do to make sure that it's ready. We didn't have to do probably 80% of the stuff that we ended up doing, but we did it all just as a precaution. Once again, I want to really thank this new Facebook friend for sending us this photo. It's something that really helps us kind of have a peace of mind that the car is on there safe and sound. Just to be able to visualize the car being on the boat as it's making its journey across the Atlantic, that feels really good. And the other thing we found is that instead of having it take 10 days, it's now going to take roughly, I think, 17 days. Initially, the car was going to get there on the 17th. And today's the 7th as I'm editing this video. But we just got an update that it wasn't going to get there until the 23rd. Well, that just means we'll have a week to kind of hang out Brussels. We just have to figure out transportation, figure out lodging. Same thing that we've been doing here in Baltimore, D.C. For those of you that are interested in the details of how to get your vehicle ready for shipping, this video is for you. So, now we're back at the hotel. We have the camera on top of the air conditioning unit. So we have the air conditioning unit off, and hopefully we can get through this video without sweating. It feels okay right now. Yeah. Back at the hotel, we're finally without a vehicle. And we're gonna be without a vehicle for the next two and a half weeks. In this video, I'm actually edit editing a video back there right now. We're about 10 days behind, because in that video, when we pulled into Knoxville and spent the night, mm -hmm. It said we're about 10 days away from putting the car into the port okay. to leave it in the yard. So <clears throat> 10 days later from that video, we are now in Baltimore without a car in a hotel room, which we have originally we were planning to leave this hotel the day we bring the car in and then having all of our luggage and then having to go figure out where we're going to stay after. <clears throat> that was dumb. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have worked <laughs> as well. I mean, it would have worked. It, it just, just wouldn't have been annoying. as ideal. Yeah. It's nice that we were able to come back to this hotel for another night. And then tomorrow, now that we have all this stuff that we're going to take with us, <clears throat> tomorrow we'll know, or tonight we're going to pack it all up and mm -hmm. see what we can do. We, we bought three of these, like, rolling duffel bags for, like... 15 20 bucks each for Walmart mm -hmm. they're sturdy enough to last these next couple weeks but probably cheap enough where we can like give them away or dispose of them when we get to Belgium if we want to yeah so we're trying to pack everything that we can there and with the van yesterday we worked more or less all day on figuring out what we want to keep with us what we need to pack in there mm -hmm. We went to a propane place and had the gas purged. Well, technically, they just kind of let it bleed out by itself. They couldn't, quote unquote, purge it officially. It was more of a pain than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I didn't think it was, it was so difficult to do. We can't empty tanks. We can't do that. Like, why? Nobody just will empty it for us. Nobody will put their name on the tank and say that it was purged. 
and the only person who would who would do it is like this guy who we were talking to that we consider having checked the van into the to the shipping yard for us um, but he was like oh, it's gonna be 50 bucks I'm just gonna write write a piece of paper and give it to them and they trust me they're just gonna let it through which it's so shady it's not a little shady he was he wanted 150 bucks to check the van in for us in the customs and another 50 bucks on top of that for the propane we're like well you know what I think we'll go another way because we kind of want to know what the process looks like yeah. so and we also while we were waiting for the propane to get expelled out of our tank it took like three hours two and a half three hours so we left it with the propane guy and then we went to the Home Depot nearby and had him cut perfect size pieces of plywood so then once we tucked everything in under the bed we screwed him in there's a video I think by the time I post this there'll be a video <laughs> describing that so anyways look at that video <clears throat> if you want to see what that looks like and then once we got the tank so today this morning we did the last final touches of getting it all ready and drove it over across the bridge and waited for oh we went with another guy who was recommended by the shipping agent mm. this guy named Remy the problem is you can't just drive your van into the port you need an escort mm -hmm. and so I paid for an escort <clears throat> service yeah it's like <laughs> she had an escort he and she had a date he cost a hundred bucks she had a hundred dollar escort for an hour yeah he said it was gonna be like he said oh it won't take very long maybe an hour and a half two hours so we we're expecting it to go the long end of that estimation so we met this guy we didn't know what his deal is or what he looked like but he came he was an older guy mm -hmm. very legit he had a vehicle that had like a port baltimore port license plate and he had a bright yellow vest that he let you wear which you have to wear when you're in the port yeah and then marlene drove off we, marlene went because her name is on all the paperwork that we've been doing this she was like stressed out last night about it so i didn't realize if i put my name on everything i'm the one that has to go to the port and deal with all the port people yeah the I last have, thing you want i should have put your name but it was too late <clears throat> right I, it was on me and the if you guys are ever going to do this yourselves, put the person's name who you want to handle all this stuff in person. Yeah. It, it turned out good for yeah, you. Yeah, it was fine. I you just you were stressed out last night you didn't sleep, but you can yeah. explain how it went today because I didn't go. You went. The escort, Remy? the port escort guy, he met us at a Best Western parking lot so you and the kids can hang out. Mm -hmm. And I followed him into the port. <clears throat> and there was no lines. It was empty. For being a busy port, that was kind of surprising for a Thursday at 1 p.m. I mean, I'm sure their their schedules are not based on like days of the week, yeah. but more like when the when the boats get in. Right. So I grew up at the port of Los Angeles, so it always seemed super busy. So driving here, I just felt a little different. But we showed up, and I was super nervous. I didn't sleep last night. I didn't want this all on me in case there's an inspection. I got to take out the screwdriver, take the whole van apart. Not I a had, screwdriver. I had to show them our propane tank. But what happened was I showed up to the gate with the escort, get a gate pass. Well, he was driving a separate car. Yeah, separate car. I'm be following behind him. So the first step is to get a gate pass. So we go, you know, this little machine, and there's a phone, and it printed out. And he took my driver's license, and then he took that to the next little station, and they checked the ID and the gate pass again. And then you go to kind of like the little car wash metal things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? It's, is it like a scanner? Did no. it scan your car? No, it was just a cop was sitting in there. Maybe for oh. shade. I don't know. Maybe okay. he does, you know, if they take everything out. But then a guy came up to me. He's mm -hmm. like, do you mind unlocking the door? For campers, I just walk in. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm like, well, that's awesome. <laughs> so he walks in and he's like, all right. Looks good. Looks good. So now We took the surfboards off, which we weren't initially going to do. Right. But we decided, at the end, we decided to take it off to not give them yet another reason to kind of suspect that we may be carrying a lot of stuff. Because right. the way that we had the van packed up, there's nothing like on, on the dash, under the seats, or mm -hmm. on the counters, or anything, or in the cabinets. It was pretty well stashed away. Things look empty in there. The fridge was, was empty. Yeah. It was our bedding. 
pillows yeah. and everything. And then our water jug's kind of empty sitting on the bed. So we right. took those surfboards and we put them in the kids' beds. And then I put the comforter on top to kind of hide them and for them not to slip off. Yeah, because if it hits rough seas or whatever, yeah, right, it could slide off. Okay. So inspection, he just looked inside and then he sh- shooed us away. And then we went to customs. And in customs, I didn't even have to go in. I sat in the car. And Remy, the escort, he took five copies of the title, five copies of our dock receipt, which is like our ticket to go on the boat, and mm-hmm. the original title and my driver's license. So he went there, and it just took seriously two minutes. And the dock receipt you get by working with the shipping agent, because you can't work directly with the shipping company who runs the boat. Right. An agent you work through who they work with the shipping company it will provide you all that paperwork if you guys are ever going to try to do this yourself then after customs we cleared customs and then we drove to i think it's like where the ship will come in and the company manages that ship and all the vehicles that wait there like that piece of property so you go into one office they give you a piece of paper you take it to another office and a guy comes out and says hey follow me i'm going to show you where to park and that's what we did. We followed him to a park, and we parked next to we call them the giraffe cranes. Yeah, the big cranes. The in big the cranes ports. and the warehouses. Yeah, they lift the containers off the boat and put them in the right. yard. Right, and so I was really nervous. And then as soon as I drove into the port, a funny thing happened, which I wasn't expecting, but I should have expected, is it felt like my childhood home because I grew up in the port of Los Angeles. So I drove somewhere where I see these cranes. When her parents <laughs> smuggled her in from Croatia in a container. <laughs> no. Okay, not that part. <laughs> so I just got comfortable. I felt like I was back in San Pedro, which is the port of LA. Yeah. And it was just like fine. Everything went smoothly. Everybody was nice. Except for the humidity and the sticky air. <laughs> Besides that, it was today. all normal. It was, yeah. Today it was better, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then I parked the car, and then he's like, okay, give me the key. I took, oh, I took off both license plates. Yeah, off which the they car. recommended. Yeah, in we case do. somebody steals it. So I took that off. And we have them with us. They're, it's, it's not on, on the car. It's not in the car. Right. Um, and then he showed me where park. He, I took that off, the license plates <laughs> off. And then I, oh, I gave him the key. He's mm-hmm. like, I take all the camper keys, and I put them in the office. And everything's unlocked. <laughs> no, you want me to lock up? Nope. <laughs> I'm like, sure. <laughs> I mean, what if you would have locked it up? Would he have said anything? I don't know. Well, we'll see. We have everything kind of put away, so. Yeah, and then. Oh, right. our kitchen cabinet, which we put these like bronze handles on. We were able to use that and wrap like a, like a. Bike lock. Bicycle lock coil bicycle lock around there really tight and then clamp it so stuff in there too that's secure oh they didn't ask about the propane at all no they don't care we got a receipt from this propane guy we got a tag that you hung on there and you wrote empty and then signed his yeah. name company name phone number he charges 20 bucks but yeah it's worth it because you never know because i guess they could do a random check one out of ten vehicles and de- we'll have to go through this. And depending if you have a strict car shipping company or yeah. not, ours is yeah, just a little bit more lenient. Company. Right. So it wasn't yeah. a problem. And we'll put the links to the shipping company and our agent's information in the description below here for any of you guys who want to go try to do this. And obviously, we're still at the start of this process mm-hmm. in 17 days the boat is supposed to get there. The boat doesn't even sail for another like six days, the seven boat, days. The boat's not even there. The boat's not even <laughs> there yet. So the car's just waiting. The car's just gonna sit there for the next week while we're in this hotel and in another hotel. Um, when the boat leaves, it'll take about 11, 12 days to get mm-hmm. there and then we'll try to get there the day before, but we've also heard that expect delays. There could be delays. Even though it's a direct trip, basically, it leaves Baltimore and it goes across the Atlantic without stopping anywhere else in North America. Mm-hmm. And I think it does stop in somewhere in the UK first before it comes across to, to Belgium, to our port. 
So hopefully there's no delays. If there is, it'll be because of weather, hopefully. But our plan is to meet it there. Like, well, we fly on the 16th, yeah, we'll which is 17. 17 days. The boat gets there on the 17th. And it could be another day before we can actually go and clear it through customs and get it out. But we'll do another update to this process mm -hmm. once we get there. Once we have the car in our hands, we'll show you guys what it looks like. If it's if everything that we Secured. thought was would be there is are all still there. So, well, that's it. We're uh, now we're sitting in this hotel room. Let's wrap it up because you're uh, starting to sweat. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> all right. So, thank you guys for watching all this. If you're still listening after all this boring gibberish, thank you for sticking around and. I want to appreciate you guys for subscribing. For those of you that are interested in this kind of travel and this process, feel free to subscribe if you're not already. And we will uh, bring out another episode. So the next few videos will probably be more about us just kind of traveling around the DC area without a car. And we'll figure out how things go. Right? Some whining involved in this heat, for sure. It's going to be carrying a lot of stuff, a lot of kids walking around. Our cat. like terminals with a, we got a backpack for our cat to, to stay in while we're like moving from one place to another so this this would be a very interesting process maybe more interesting than shipping a car to europe so anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye